I think of Glass as like this horrible relationship I'm in where we break up a lot, but we always get back together. And lately we've been kind of broken up, but we're, we're probably gonna get back together. My name is Jamie Rose and I'm a visual artist. Visual artist is a very broad term. It essentially means anybody who is an artist who works visually. So that could be a painter, a drawer, a sculptor. It could mean any number of things. So I work primarily with glass and I also do a lot of charcoal drawings. My glass work is a little all over the place. Um, I am a flame worker and a kiln former. Typically people think of glass blowing, which is using a furnace and those big pipes and a hot shop. So I don't do any of that. I do flame working, which is using a torch that's on a bench, so you have an open flame and you have rods and tubes of glass that you manipulate in the flame into whatever form you want. And I also do kiln forming, which is making things, setting them up in a kiln, running a schedule. So basically the magic happens in the kiln and then later you come back to it. So that's like kiln casting or fusing or slumping, things like that. For me, I pick glass when I do a lot of my sculptural work because it's the closest thing to magic that there is. There's no other material that does what glass does. It reflects, it's transparent, it's shiny, and clear glass I think is really where it's at because it, it takes on the color of anything near it. If you hit it right, it can make rainbows. Like it's really, there's nothing else that does what it does. When you're drawing, it's you're in the room with everybody and then as you go, slowly, everybody starts to leave the room. And when you're really drawing, you've left the room. And that's how I feel about it. Like, I'm not even there anymore when I'm really into it. And then suddenly I stop drawing. And I'm like, oh, who even did this? And I, I think that too, when I look at my old work, I'm like, who made that? I, I don't remember doing that. And yeah, it feels like a stranger did it. That's how like weirdly meta I get <laughs> when I'm working on drawing. So I didn't get into charcoal until I started going to community college and took a few art classes there. And I had an art teacher named John Tuchillo, who was this amazing, amazing instructor. And he taught me how to work with charcoal and I've just never looked back. I just really love the drama that charcoal brings. So yeah, when Glass and I are broken up, I fall back on drawing all the time. So my primary focus when I'm drawing with charcoal is the figure. I've always been really drawn to the figure. I've taken lots of figure drawing classes. It's always been my favorite. Recently, I've been working with models. So for a long time, I used myself as a reference just because it was easy. I'm always available and I'm free, but I'm done doing that. It's, it's a pain and I want to represent a wider array of people. I've been reaching out to people. I'm pretty specific about who I want as a model and I just asked them if they would like to be a model for this project I'm doing. And so far, everybody I've asked has said yes. And when it's done, I send them the drawing, if they're happy with it, and then we move forward. And I always, for this particular series, have been adding an element of gold. So I use gold ink, which is a really nice contrast to the like very dramatic dark charcoal. And that, that element depends, it varies a lot depending on what the drawing looks like. I did receive the UETF grant, which was amazing, and I've been using that money primarily to cover the cost of framing. So with drawing, there's always this sort of dilemma about how do you display it in a way that's safe. You can just pin a drawing up to a wall and that works, but then it's really exposed. And also it's not, it's not a sellable, which is another part of my project. So Part of the money of the proceeds that when somebody purchases a drawing, part of it goes towards the model, so they get paid, and part of it goes towards a nonprofit of the model's choice. So some of the models have chosen nonprofits like Planned Parenthood, uh, Dara Lou's Birthing Center, which is a natural birthing center here in Albuquerque, um, the New Mexico Transgender Resource Center, nonprofits like that. I've always believed that as an artist, it's our responsibility to make the places that we live in better in whatever way that we can. Um, I don't remember who told me this, but somebody once said that being an artist is like being an earthworm. So we go to these places because we're poor <laughs> and we go to places like cities where it's kind of cheap to live, but there is an art-ish scene. And then we create art and people love art. So they come to see it and then coffee shops are opening up and galleries are opening up. And before you know it, you have this trendy, cool area and the artists can't afford to live there anymore. And so they move on to the next spot. <laughs> and that's kind of what artists do. And that's how I've, I've always really related to that. Like, yeah, I'll be an earthworm. Being able to donate 
to nonprofits. I've been very aware of making sure we donate to local nonprofits. That's why Dara Luz was such a good one in the New Mexico Transgender Resource Center. Things here because I want to help the people here because this is where we are. So getting this grant from the city of Albuquerque, having only been here for a year or so, it was really, really meaningful and I really appreciate it and I'm happy to be here and be a part of the art scene.